There are 11 participants in the conference. Oh. All right, good evening, good everybody, can everyone hear and see me okay? If you can, if you will let us know, please, in the chat, or you can come online uh, verbally and talk to me. All right. Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. All right, I'm getting several yeses in the chat. Thank you all so much. And looks like we're looking good on YouTube, so you all give me a thumbs up and let me know what's going on over there. All right, fantastic. All right, well, let's go ahead and have an opening prayer. If I have an elder officer or someone who can uh, render our opening prayer, let's do that at this time. Okay. Good I'll evening. Pray. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for this day. Father God, we thank you for all your many blessings, Father God. Father God, we thank you and bless our pastor and first lady and his family. Father God, bless Blackburn Chapel as a whole. Father God, bless each member name by name. Now, Father God, as we go into Bible study, Father God, let us hear a word, Father God, that can improve our life, Father God. And Father God, help us to share your word to someone else to help them along the way. Now, Father God, I pray for the sick and shut in at Blackburn Chapel and abroad. Father God, bless all Bible study teachers, Father God, ministers, Father God. Bless all pastors, Father God. And Father God, I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Hall, for that. And again, welcome to everybody. Glad to have all of you here. 
I pray that everyone is doing well. Uh, is there anything anybody want to share or talk about or discuss while we're still getting things situated and, and at the front end of the call here? All right. If not, I hope you all have been enjoying, if you enjoyed your holiday week earlier in the week and uh, enjoying uh, this, hopefully this improvement upon the weather we've been having. It's still been hot, but it don't seem like it's been quite as bad. So, all right, let's get into it. Uh, if I can share my screen here. We've been talking about uh, a pace of life and all the chaos that's going on around us. And I know uh, we've had some really great discussions. And I know I asked last time, you know, if, if it was having an impact on, you know, us and our our lives, if we're starting to pay attention to uh, the pace that we probably, we've been moving in and versus how we should move when it comes to the things of God. Anybody else kind of understanding that dynamic and, and assessing your, uh, your pace and making sure that you're, you're moving in succinct with the pace setter. Did everybody say amen to that? Amen. All right. I'm trying to make sure I can still see the chat messages here. Hang on with me one second. All right, fantastic. Ramisha said trying. <laughs> That's honest. It's not always easy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to sit up here and super spiritualize it to make it seem like we we get it right every time or that we are we're perfectly uh, doing everything the way we ought to, but it is. It begins with this: what we're doing, having the discussions that make us aware. One that maybe we are moving too fast. Maybe we are moving uh, at a pace that's causing us more issues and challenges than God really intends. And then, at the point of aware, be, becoming aware of it, then being humble enough and honest enough to get the tools, the resources to maybe readjust and recalibrate our timing so that we make sure again that we're moving with the pace setter. And I keep saying that because that term was deemed a couple of weeks back and it perfectly describes who God is, what the Holy Spirit represents for us and helping to set our pace. Remember we talked about last week, there are seasons where we ought to move fast, that we ought to move at a, at a hurried pace. But then there are seasons and moments where we ought to slow down and be still in the moments of life and understand how faith is developed even in the still moments of seeing like there's nothing that's going on. Amen. Any questions or comments on that before we have to pick up what we left off? Alright, there we go. We got it. Alright, so we, we were I know we were on number two. Well, first of all, can you all see the screen? Yes. 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 On YouTube is small. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go. So everybody can see it good. Let me make it a little bit larger. One second. Let me stop it for just a second to readjust something. All right. Can we still see it? Yes. Okay. All right, so we're on number two, um, and we started talking about social media and some of the challenges of social media and, and what they present, uh, and I know we were talking about relationships, um, and I'm going to start, I'm going to read this particular sentence, and then we can pick up here. It, it says here, no need to invest, or this is the mentality that people develop based on what social media and the fast pace of life has produced in us. People feel like now there's no need to invest in relationships where people actually get to know you and vice versa because it takes up too much of our time. Has anybody, first of all, have anybody experienced that where uh, people seem to be in such a rush to move past the courtship as it used to be called in relationships to get on with other stuff? Anybody know something about that? I've seen that or experienced that. They got these speed dating sites and 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 uh, yes, app this yes. swipe left here and right and y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of the courtship out of the equation. But what's the what's the danger? What what's the benefit of courtship? I'll say it that way. I know it sounds old fashioned, but what is there a benefit to that that we're missing today? You get to know more about each other. 
uh, early on. If you just okay. take your time. All right. Very good. Anybody else? It's an opportunity so that you can have that almost um, two-way dialogue um, and understanding and knowing the person authentically compared to what's going on today is just behind the scenes. So you can actually physically see, physically talk, and get to know that person. All right. Very good. And Ruby said to learn of, of each other. And Marissa said keep people from rushing into unequal relationships. Very good words of wisdom. Because believe it or not, I don't care how great the early parts of your relationship is, there will be days where there are really difficult moments where you're going to see somebody in a light that you won't see them in until it gets rough. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, Amen. And you have to be able to be in a relationship so much so that the, that allows you to hand, not only handle those moments, but to still understand where love fits in the moments when things are not ideal. Okay? Love doesn't, you can't just turn love off. You can't just turn it on. It's not just something that's a feeling. It's something that's long-lasting and that sustains highs, lows, ebbs, flows, and all that makes a relationship exist. Okay, let me get these comments and I'll ask for any more. Asia said, you get to know a person in every season of their life. Amen. Good. When, you, when upset, when sad, hurt, angry, instead of just knowing them in their happy space. Very good. Absolutely. And Marissa, amen that. Yeah, all of those, and that's just a handful of emotions and seasons and, and, and situations that she described. People are one way when they're upset, they're a different way when they're sad, hurt causes another wave of emotions, and angry. And you have to be able to understand what the totality of that person is, and more importantly, how it either vibes with or vibes against who you are as a person in those moments or else you're going to get deep into a relationship and got all caught up, lovey-dovey, intimate and all these things only to find out you married somebody you don't even know. All right. Questions or comments? Um, I'm glad you mentioned about um, the other part, which is you, yourself, because sometimes we get in relationships to know a person when also we should be getting to know ourselves as it relates to being in a relationship with others because it's like you may be lovey-dovey and fine with them but you don't ever take into account that you're going to be with this person forever are you the type of person that it doesn't matter what that person is how are you with other people or somebody you're yeah. going to have to be with forever absolutely absolutely mother Massey said take time to know one another it's a process and look out for the red flags all right, let's talk about both of those things. Ramesha, Ramesha's right. Let me ask you all this. Is a perfect marriage 50-50 uh, where you come together 50-50? Is that a perfect marriage? No, sir. Sure? Well, I, I got some big no's with that. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's talk about that because that's definitely what the world projects as the ideal relationship in marriage. What's wrong with 50-50? Fifty fifty, you got two unwhole people trying to come together to make something complete. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see the problem with that? <laughs> That's exactly the problem. Is you got two unwhole, incomplete people trying to make each other a whole when they haven't completed the whole process themselves. No, a good relationship, an ideal way that God intends for us to have a relationship is two whole people who have taken time to process themselves enough through life and have found their identity in Christ. Remember, we've been talking about our true identity is hidden in him, who's taken the time to know enough about themselves and that has learned to live a balanced, healthy, and whole life independently, and now the other person is an added blessing to what was already whole and complete. Do y'all see that? Mm-hmm. I need to see some amens on that because that's, that's the truth. That's the difference between yeah. the world's pace and the Lord's pace, okay? Uh, let's see. I got you given only half base if they give you half. Yep, 100% effective single life. Amen, showing up. Amen. All right. So that's the difference. <laughs> it's worth okay. the time to invest in finding out who you are so that God can equip you to be that perfect balance to the next person that he's adding to your life. Did I have somebody have a comment or something? Well, I have one. Yeah, this, this Renata, I'm sorry.
Okay. Go ahead, Renata. Renata, you go ahead. I was, and mama. I was said I remember this uh, conversation where I put a hundred percent effect a single from a class you taught years ago, <laughs> and it still resonate about being a one hundred percent whole when you come together. And so at times you feel like you depleted, and not a hundred percent. That's when your spouse can help you. So um, yeah. I remember that. I just want to say that. I was wondering. I, I, I can remember what setting I talked about it in, but yeah, it, that has been a while. Uh, but yeah, it's very important um, to understand the blessing of single life in preparation for the next stage. You can't bypass it and expect for you to have everything that you're looking for. Mother Massey talked about here, nobody can complete you. You can't let, can't wait to get married, a ring on your finger, a house and all that to feel like you're going to be complete. You're, you're going to have a void. It's still going to be a void. You sitting in that house with all that stuff and you still going to fill the void. And that's when people start lashing out at each other because you mad that person didn't fulfill the need when you didn't take time to make sure y'all get what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> I, could, I could go in on yeah. that. All right, mom, go ahead. Uh, y'all kind of cover what I was about to say. Uh, it's important to court for a while because I've seen instances where people uh, watched someone for a while and then became what they were looking for. Yep. And played that role for a while and then until they got them all in love and everything and then changed on them. Yeah. So it takes it time. You have to work on yourself. And if you're working on yourself, then God will help you to recognize different flags or different signs and stuff. It just takes time and much prayer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very important. That happens quite often. And that's why, you know, from a spiritual sense, you know, a lot of people tell you not to have premarital sex and all these things from a moral standpoint. But it's more than just a moral thing. It's actually when you understand what takes place spiritually, when two become one, and the way God designed that type of union and interaction that takes place to, to progress, then you become connected, attached to a person, to so much so that once that act is over, you mm -hmm. have things there that you have to deal with. And if you have not allowed yourself to be whole before that, then, or if that relationship is not in a committed way that will allow the progressions to take place that need to be, then that creates a more crazy dynamic that you now have to deal with that people never, ever talk about. Yes. So it's more than just a moral thing. God designed it to be a lasting thing that you would continue to evolve into based on what that connection represents. Am I making sense without going into too many details? Yes. It's yes. important enough to discuss. We, we grown-ups. Uh, I'm going to talk about Ramesha's thing in a second. Um, but it, it's also important because you have to take time to get to know people before you get heavily involved emotionally and especially sexually because watch this. What happens is if you proceed and bypass the process, then by the time you discover the truth of who mm -hmm. they are, now you all emotionally involved and you yeah. connected, you then gave all this stuff to them and all, and now you feel almost like you have to stay. That's how people end up being in abusive relationships and all this kind of stuff. It's not so much that they weak-minded and all that or, or whatever, but by the time you realize the truth, you've allowed yourself to get so caught up to where yeah. it's hard to just tear yourself away from it, okay? All right. Questions, comments? All right. Uh, Ramisha said, Grandma used to say, bring them by the house so she can tell you who their <laughs> people are. <laughs> I guess she was saying if the family is crazy, you would get a heads up on that person too. That's a dynamic I didn't even talk about. You got to know their family too. You're not just marrying that person. You're marrying mm -hmm. everything, all of it, all the stuff involved in that. So that has to make sure that's something you got to discuss and have a plan for. And uh, it ain't always pretty. But, you know, God will give you wisdom on how to deal with things in such a way that you develop uh, a close-knit connection and then set your family dynamics based on that. Whereas if you just go into it blindly, you'll find yourself in a, in a hornet's nest and you don't even realize what's going on. All right. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> so it's important, going back to the document here, 
not to mimic the world's pace of not, not investing in relationship and bypassing the process of taking time to know a person, okay? Uh, the next part says, our culture is in bed with large followings and spotlights. Going back to social media again. The short-term result is validation. That's what you get in the short term. But the long-term consequences are burnout, watch it now, loneliness, and overcommitment. Yeah. That's what voids end up creating when you don't do this at the at God's pace. Y'all with me? Questions, comments on that? Have you seen people in that where they're burned out, lonely, and, and, and left like they just running all over the place? A lot of times that's based in a spirit or a mindset that was seeking validation. And even though you affirmed me before, I'm doing what I'm doing now to get that affirmation from you again. And I'm going to talk about in a second what happens when that doesn't happen, when that you don't get that. All right. Now, the danger in that crowds are fickle. <laughs> Followings are self-seeking. They love you until, here it is, y'all, you say something they disagree with. And mm -hmm. we live in a world now where this world, I, I inserted this word, council culture. Let's. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, Asia said, I have, have you have a million followers and no real friends in dark time. Y'all see that? You mm -hmm. got all these followers and likes. You can have a million followers and have not a single friend. Isn't that sad? That's and you right. know, it's a, it's a lot of, uh, hold on one second, Mom. It's a lot of celebrities and famous people who that's their reality. They got all these followers and the image, but they have no true friend they can go to in the moments where they actually need to have a friend. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mom. I, I was just going to say, uh, and he, in social media, it's a big playground for dishonesty. Somebody can appear to be a good person or, or you know, whatever, but you don't really know because you don't really mm -hmm. know the person. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Go. And if I can use for an example... Um, about the followers, um, I think about R. Kelly um, just for a minute, and knowing that there had to have been like a calling on his life, that God was going to use him in such a way, but because of the fortune, the fame, and everything else, in his evil, twisted mind, because we all are human, um, and within that, no one was a true friend around him to tell him, R. Kelly, this is not the path. But yeah. everybody was around him trying to get the up and comings from him so that they could advance their career, so they could get here and further and stuff like that. But no one was bold enough to tell him, look, friend, this is not the way you should go. That's mm -hmm. a very good example. You know, mm -hmm. it's funny she says that. Ramesh, you know, I've told them, her especially, kids were younger. Uh, I was a big fan. I told her years ago, he is so talented, and he's actually anointed in a way, a gifted, I should say, but it's like he's always battling. He's always conf at conflict. You remember their mission? I used to say he's like he's always yes. at conflict, and like you said, there was never really anyone there that helped him navigate that to the degree that would allow him to hone what was given to him so that it would not destroy him in the wrong way. So it happens a lot. You know, we have gifts, we have talents, we have all these great abilities, but we also have challenges, and the enemy is after us. And he can take something that's so pure and God-given and distort it and confuse you to such a degree that you end up losing yourself in the midst of And It's not that you're a bad person. It's not that you're necessarily evil in and of yourself, but the influences that are around us can get, get to all of us if we're not safeguarded and protected. So Amen. this is not a play thing. It's not a play thing, and it's not that some people are, are are stronger than others by themselves, but it's the Spirit of God that makes me strong. When mm -hmm. I'm weak, He's strong. Greater is mm -hmm. He that's in me. All these things is when God is being built up in you. Now the Spirit of God becomes the strength needed to withstand these evil things, And but you also need the right people around you to help you nurture that and not talk about it as if it's something you don't need or that you soft if that's the path you take. All right, questions, comments? And one more thing, because no one uh, was strong enough to stand or a multitude of people weren't strong, strong enough to stand uh, to help him, look how many people were hurt 
in yeah. in the outcome of this. Look how Man. many women and young girls were hurt because nobody was bold enough to say uh, differently. Amen. Yep. All right. Uh, Asia said you have to stay stay grounded in the word, stay fully covered in the army of God. Amen. Amen. Any other questions or comments on that? All right, let's talk cancel culture for just a second. I, I stopped screen sharing, but I want to I want to be able to see what's going on on this discussion. I'll go ahead. Go you know ahead. No, go ahead. I see a oh, comment. A Minister King said, "Tells our children get to know someone before you start pulling off stuff." Amen. If they are God sent, they will wait on that part and get to know you, and you is capitalized. Amen. He said that. He said it the way it need to be said before you start mm -hmm. taking stuff off. You need to keep on the spirit of the Holy, the, the whole armor of God, and those things. And that's not again. I, I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm serious about it. It's not just a moral thing. It's so much deeper than that. Is so much more involved, and so many things can happen and will yeah. happen if you allow that essence of you to be given away, to be misused, to be mistreated and misrep <clears throat> excuse me, misrepresented. Because like he just stated, anybody that's God-given and that's supposed to add to who you are will respect and value, actually, is the key word you ought to key in on. Respect Amen. and value the path that you're on, and then the validation you need doesn't come from them. It came from God, and then you all can experience the beauty of that in the time and in the way that God has provided that's safe for you to do so. So it's a beautiful thing the way God designed it, but when we take the world's design and try to put God's <laughs> blessing on it, that's when we get ourselves in trouble. And I've said it many a times, you can try to put something together and put your own stamp of approval on it, but God is not obligated to bless your mess. If you put a messy situation together, don't then go and demand God's blessings upon it because that's not the template he gave you. But when you take the time and move at his pace and allow him to give you the blueprint, give you the wisdom, the strength, the, the instructions and all that, and you allow him to put it together, then when it's put together, you can stand on his word, you can expect blessings, you can present it to him, and know that it's going to be blessed and kept because he put it together. Let's turn in our Bibles real quick on this point, Psalm 127, verse number 1. I want us to read that. Psalm 127, verse number 1. Psalm 127. Verse number one, and I, I don't mind. I want to maybe at least two translations, but I at least want it read in King James at least once, because I, I, I want to. I like the way it reads, and I want it to resonate with you. Psalm one twenty seven, verse one. You ready? Mm -hmm. Pastor, I have the uh, King okay. James version. Okay, thank you, Minister King. Go ahead, sir. It reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That was one of my favorites, too. That's Psalm 121. Let's, but let's look at 127. That is a good one, though, oh, while he had okay. it. <laughs> that is a good one, though. That's, but I want us to get on this foundation. So 127, try that one for me. Okay. Are you good? Pastor. We needed to hear that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> I went to 21. You want 121. Somebody, somebody needed that one too. That's a good one. He is my light of salvation. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. 127, yeah. verse 1. Psalm verse 1. Yes, sir. Okay, I have the King James Version. All right. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in pain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, they, the watchman walketh but in vain. Amen. That's it right there. Somebody give me another translation of that, and then I want to tie it together. I like that. I got the New World translation. All right, that's good, Trina. Go ahead. All right. Unless Jehovah builds the house, it is in vain that its builders work hard on it. Unless Jehovah guards the city, it is in vain that the guard stays awake. All right, that's good. So what's going on here? What's the warning here? And what's the uh, the the meaning behind what's being stated? Uh, 
except the Lord puts anything together, puts everything together, then we're just basically burning energy. It's useless. Very good. Very good. Anybody and we, else? And, oh, and go ahead. we're unable uh, ourselves to keep things together. If God doesn't keep it together, it won't be kept. Hearing her say that, I knew I know what this means, but hearing her say that, how many of y'all remember Three Little Pigs? Y'all remember that? Three Little Pigs? Yeah, they, yes, they, sir. They, they were building them little houses, and, and there's only one of them that lasted, right? The other ones, they labored, but they labored in vain because the building wasn't done to the degree that it needed to be with, to withstand the evil of the big bad wolf. Same with our lives. Unless God builds the house, unless he lays the foundation, unless he gives you the design and the tools and materials, then yeah, you're trying. You're putting forth the effort. You're putting something together. But you do know now that you can labor in vain unless you consult the pace setter, the building construction, construction manager, the architect. Whatever terminology you want to deem him, you have to seek him and build by his design in order for it to withstand the vicissitudes and the challenges of life. Does that make sense? Y'all with me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mother Massey said, if it, it will fall apart if it's not put together by God. Absolutely. That's it right there. All right. Questions, comments on that? All right. So so let's let's talk about this cancel culture thing. What, what does it mean, cancel? How many have heard that? that we live in this cancel culture. Has anybody heard that terminology? I've heard it, but I don't know what it means. That's why I wanted to ask, because I want everybody to know what it means. Some people, yeah, some people hadn't even heard of it. That's good. Well, I know the young people have heard it because that's really what happens on social media. Somebody mm -hmm. tell me what it means to be to, to be in cancel culture. Ghosting people are... Look at my mama. <laughs> Go ahead, <dude. laughs> All right. What, yeah, what, what else? Say, if the, they kick you out of things, out of the group, out of the loop, out yep. of the circle. You're not included. Very good. Very good. All right. I like that. Anybody else? What, what happens to your status? You're an influencer. You're, you're uh, an actor, an actress. What happens? Like you start losing like you're black black ball. Yep. black ball you start losing endorsements you start start losing sponsorships start losing support give me some examples of when it has happened it's been very recent and it's been a many a, a numerous occasions <laughs> you just mentioned one Bill Will Cosby's Smith. one Will Smith is the the, near, the most recent one uh, Ramisha mentioned R. Kelly. That's another one. When you, all of a sudden you lose the support, you lose what was normal to you. You you lose your image, and on internet, you your name is mud. People are now they're talking about in the chats instead of how great an actor you are, how great your accomplishments are. Now they're talking about all your faults and your wrongs and all your skeletons. Monique, that's another one. So that's the society we live in where they're Hosanna, Hosanna one day, but then they're crucify and crucify on the next. And Man. if your life is based on the opinions of people, if you're caught up in all the followers and all the, the self-seeking people, then as soon as something goes left, and in some of these instances, watch this now, sometimes the person is innocent. Right. There have been some instances where people have been accused of things that they weren't necessarily guilty of, but being guilty in the public opinion, court of public opinion, or by association or whatever, now everything that was normal to them that they based their life upon has been taken from them. And now they're left trying to figure out. That's why there's an uptick in, in uh, uh, suicides, um, all these different things, because you think about it, if you've been in a, such a public person and your life has been built on an image that's false or that you were depending upon, when that is now no longer your crutch or your foundation, as we just read, now you're trying to figure it all out, and some people can't deal with that. Okay? 
Tell me y'all understand what I'm saying. Does it make it? Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Kim said value is lost because it's placed in man, but and not God. Absolutely, that's the that's the problem with that. Cancel culture is so big, people can lose their job. Yeah, homes, everything. Yeah, people. There's an in instances where people have lost their jobs, their mm -hmm. their livelihoods, uh, and their homes, their children, everything. This is not a plaything. This is a big deal, and that's why you even got to be careful what you're putting on social media. Let me tell y'all something. Your employers, they look at that stuff. Yes, they do. Uh, when you want to, to be a part of groups and organizations, they look at those things. So you can project yourself one way in an interview, but trust, that's not all the research that's going to be done, especially for any job that's worth merit, but just about every job this day and time, that is a, that is a real thing. So be careful, be careful. Not only, it's so, it's, people are so fickle. It don't even necessarily have to be your thought or your idea. They get caught up if you just like something, <laughs> if you just tag something, if you just agree with something that's not in their, in their comfort zone. They will cast aspersions upon you. Y'all, y'all, are y'all are y'all living in the same world I'm living in? Y'all know what I'm talking about. So yes, you sir. have to be. You have to be guarded at all times and allow the Spirit of God to give you wisdom to know when to speak, when to shut up, when to comment, when to not say anything. Just because you're quiet don't mean you don't have an opinion and it don't mean that your opinion has to be approved by everybody else. That's why I don't talk, I don't really talk politics. When I worked in the fire department, they couldn't get nothing out of me. It used to, I know it used to drive them crazy. They couldn't figure me out. I didn't discuss those things because we can be friends, we can be co workers. But those things, one, I don't put a whole lot of stock in those things anyway because I, you know, I seek God for, for, my, for my everyday ins and outs. But even if I have an opinion, I don't need to verify my opinion by a person, nor do they necessarily want to know my opinion and to value it. Some people want to know what you think just so they can argue it or put you in a category or put you mm -hmm. somewhere where they think you belong. Mm -hmm. And then they want to get a rise out of you. They want to argue it. They want to debate it. I, I'm never going to get caught up in a debate in a public forum unless God tells me otherwise, but that don't mean I'm weak-minded. No, that means that I'm focused on doing things in a way that will allow me to keep peace with man and, and my brothers and all that, and then I seek counsel from God and those that I spiritually trust to build me up and not to use it against me, okay? Wisdom. Quick, yeah, I try, yeah, wisdom. Elder Hall said that, when to like or just look and move on. Yeah, there's wisdom in that. There's wisdom in that. Mother Massey said, I get it now. The same world that lifts you up can cancel you out. They can. They can and they will. And if you base your life on the world, then you now become subjected to and then influenced and limited by what they can or can't do to you. But if you come on the spiritual side, and you hear me say it a lot, and I mean it every time I say it, if you, when you learn spiritually to let God be your God, if God be for you, it don't matter who is against you. Man can't shut a door God opened, and they cannot open doors that only God can. It's a supernatural thing, and God knows which way you need to go, what's best for you. And when you walk with him, we talked about wisdom. He is the author of wisdom. He is wisdom. And he can see things and know things that we never understand until we get up on it. So it's to your benefit to let him be uh, the architect of your life. All right, as you said, debating about your opinion on social media serves you no purpose. It really doesn't. It does not. People are, people are weird, man. I, I've, I said it many times. And I've seen it just recently as today. It can be the most innocent thing in the world. You could be saying something positive or whatever, and somebody's going to have something negative to say mm -hmm. just because that's who they are or that's the, the, the spirit that's influencing them. And you're wondering, I wasn't even trying to say that, but... So just be careful, y'all. Just be careful and don't get so caught up in this, this world's way that that becomes your identifier or your crutch, your foundation, none of those things. It's okay to use these mediums and enjoy the entertainment value of it to an extent. But remember, like we said last week, even though everything may be permissible, you got to away if everything is profitable for the walk that you're trying to walk. And if it's building up your spirit, man, and making you stronger, or if it's demeaning and tearing you down, and now you can't feel, you can't understand why you got all this heaviness on you, and why you're always down. 
it might be the environment you're in and what you're basing your life on. Okay. Um, Asia said she just said that today people wake up finding something to be negative. They do. They, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of it's sadly funny to me. I'm like, is it it's that bad? bad? <laughs> I mean, I got enough bad stuff going on in my life as is. I don't have to look for nothing else bad to, to, to find. I'm trying to find ways to, to make good the stuff that is wrong. I just, y'all have to excuse me on that. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a half gla a glass half full person. That's just who I am. And I have to look up. Or it, Minister King read that a little while ago. I, I, Lord is my life salvation. I look up to him. Mm -hmm. I try to find the good in all these things. It don't mean that some ugly stuff don't go on, go down in my life. It does. It really does. But I try not to dwell in that space, nor do I make that my dominant thought. I don't let people add more stuff to it. And if I start getting too heavy and too weighty, I have to take a minute, detox, step away, get in the Word, get connected with God, let Him build things back up. Because I know I don't function well without the Spirit of God in my life. I, I equate it to the to the Incredible Hulk. When I was a kid, Bruce Banner, he said, you won't like me when I'm angry. You won't, I'm like, that's me. I, you won't like me if I ain't spiritually connected. Stuff don't act right. I might say something. I don't feel good. Start, it's just, it just don't feel right. Has anybody ever felt that out of control? Where well, if you ain't yes. connected with God, yes. Yes. you don't feel like yourself. Yes, don't, sir. Something ain't right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Let me get out of that. Let's see. Mr. King said, I tell my children, just because you hear something don't necessarily mean you have to say something. Mm -hmm. You can hear it and not hear it. Amen. Y'all talking wisdom tonight. That's where I am right now. Yes, I feel it. Okay. Any other uh, questions or comments? Yeah, I had one. Uh, what you spoke about on your job is how I was as well. And I look at it also not only wisdom, but it's taking a stand. You taking a stand for what's right. And the people I worked with loved to gossip and talk about people and stuff like that. I just wouldn't be a part of that. And I wouldn't let nobody come and tell me anything. So to me, that's taking a stand. Mm -hmm. It's better to not say anything and not join in and be a part of it. And mm -hmm. I'll walk away in a heartbeat if I can. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Pastor, can you also see this as... Um this council culture is God's way of prepping the church for what's to come because um, the word of God tells us about the persecution that should be happening to the church in the latter days the further we get or the closer we get to his coming and if we don't learn that in spite of how people may feel about us as the church and our stance on our faith if we're not strong in our faith um, then we could fall prey to this council cu culture where we begin to deny our faith or move away from our faith just so that we won't be uh, publicly criticized or even be persecuted for our faith. Yeah, I, I can see that. But again, that it, it, we have to make sure we draw the conclusion that that's for a believer that really is trying to make a stand based on the Spirit's guidance and that's moving by his wisdom. I do think in that in that instance, the awareness of cancel culture and now that we know what it is, because some of us didn't even know what it is, it helps us realize that that is the reality we live living in. So let's not get so depending on, uh, dependent upon that so that in the day that it is a time for us to make a stand, then we won't be so dependent on that as a fear tactic to keep us from standing for Christ. On the other extreme, that does not mean that you get a word from God and you go out there and you get it in everybody's face and try to make them believe what you believe. I don't agree with, I don't subscribe to that and I don't think God does either. I don't think you should go and take what you believe or have received as the truth of God and force it upon another individual. I think you, there's, there's honor and valor in understanding the truth that God provides and making a stand on it. As a matter of fact, that's scriptural. He said, having done all the stand, you stand therefore with your loins girded about with truth. When you stand in truth, the truth will do what's needed to win the people that's ready to be to be won. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely not get to, it. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everybody. I'm, I'm <clears> saying <throat> I want everybody to understand that that's the benefit yes. of having truth. It's not for you to force everybody to know the truth at that time. It's for you to stand on it, let the light shine and illuminate and those that are ready to receive the truth will see and hear it. Go ahead, Misha. 
Oh yeah, no, I was just uh, yeah, yeah, that um, helps. Uh, and I and I was leaning more so on you know we're as much evil and hatred that is stirring up right now in the world um, that if we're not, um, it's not about us going to make everybody. Um, believe what we believe and stuff like that but just say for let, let's give an illustration you saw the up the um w when trump came into office and how many followers he had and how many people were willing to kill other people for this man so you think of the intensity that that took and and how it literally just took half of the country in one direction so it's like with that uh, the other side got canceled out and so they're willing to kill you for this man so when the Antichrist or when we move further into the last days if if we're so afraid of someone taking us out because we stand on the faith you know where would that leave us if we don't know during this season that this is all this really is it's culminating to get to that place where they have a reason to hate us and they really don't have a reason to hate us you get what I'm saying yeah I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see the correlation between that and the council, but I see what I see what you're saying, and yeah, um, we should be getting prepared for the times where there is a, a, a time for us to make a stand, and it's not received by everyone. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I was just thinking about the persecution, and I guess I was thinking in that way because people are so sensitive, they don't want to be persecuted, so they don't say anything, they don't make a stand for God, and they go hide in the background. And if you're ever confronted with that thing, are you one of those people that'll say either no, I don't know him, or I don't want to talk about Jesus and stuff like that? When if someone approaches you um, during those t when we're in persecution. The Bible doesn't tell us to shy away from our faith if they if they approach us. Now I'm not saying go out there and grab everybody and say you're gonna know Jesus, but if someone comes to me and asks me, you know, do you believe in Jesus? Am I gonna be so afraid of what their response is that I hide it just to live another day? Yeah, okay. I got you. And and that is its own entity and there is the need for us to be positioning ourselves for that. Uh, so I can I can fit it in that category. Uh, but, but basically, as we know it and as the, the majority of our culture recognizes it, uh, most times the cancel culture thing is something that happens as a result of your decision that you were not necessarily prepared for. Whereas what you're describing is something we should be getting prepared for, <laughs> is to not always be received. So they go together, but you know we just live in a time where a lot of people have made these decisions or made these stands or likes or whatever and they ended up having this pendulum swung in the other direction and now they're left with the the, the, the fallout from that where in a society that's turned on them in an instant uh, and she said oh I got it okay so it both are important but I'm just talking about the danger of us living amongst the society we're living in and basing our validation on these likes these approvals the status we've attained today the influence and then it all of a sudden can be taken away from us just because of making a stand or, or whatever. So it's dangers lurking, which is why we need the wisdom of God, the spirit of God, and the presence of God to help us navigate properly. And he will protect us in that day where we're not received by other people. So he takes care of it all. Amen. Any other questions or comments? Amen. And I see we had a, a what looks like a prayer request from uh, Mr. Chavez there. We will support and honor that, obviously, at the end, but we support that now. We definitely will pray the power of God upon that situation. Uh, let's finish the lesson, then we will do that prayer, and we'll pray for everything and everybody at that moment. Uh, any other questions or comments on the cancel culture? All right, back to the screen share here. Can you all see the screen again? Yes. All right. Yeah. So let's let's now read a little bit about how this is influenced in ministry and other areas. Somebody read that next paragraph there. I've seen this in ministry. A new family places membership, gets plugged in, becomes frustrated with an individual or church philosophy, then strikes out to the door down the road. 
All right, this is talking about somebody coming to a, 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 a person or a family coming to a church, expecting it to be one way, then not being received, and then they off to the next place. Let's, let's talk about the flaws in this particular situation and illustration. Who's at fault in that situation? I don't like to say fault, but who's the, what's, who's the challenging persons in this situation that's not gotten it right completely? I'll say it that way. Uh, maybe the person and uh, uh, family. And, you should and, be looking for God. You talking but about the family? Again, I can see where the church may, you know, be projecting the wrong thing. I don't know. This could be. I don't I got, know. I got the family. I got the members, and I got both. How about both? <laughs> both have a role in this, and let's talk about the challenges from both perspectives. Yeah. All right, so let's take the family first. They get plugged in, but then all of a sudden they become frustrated with an individual or church philosophy, and then they leave. So what's the what's the problem with that? They don't communicate their feelings or what they feel like should be, you know, different or, you know, suggestions, but instead they let themselves, not let themselves get frustrated, but when you don't speak about nothing or say something, it, it frustrates you more and more to the point where you just rather just leave it where it's at and find some other place. And I feel like okay. that's not going to change no matter what church they go to. And you're right. And But let me back up. Maybe I should tell, give you guys this so you can kind of put it in the right perspective. What should take place before they even come to a church? Prayer. Prayer and direction for wisdom on what to do, where to do it, and how to do it. Now, if you've been prayer led and God sent, and you go into a house and you discover, like Asia has stated, that there are imperfections, and let me give you a little clue: no matter where God sends you or guides you, there will be imperfections. That there, mm -hmm. there, there is no perfect church, so there's going to be some issues at each location. However, if you've been navigated and guided by God's hand. And then you go into this place and you experience a little bit of resistance or or something to that degree, and then you immediately leave, then you are in that instance walking away from the assignment and the place that God intended for you maybe to be the change agent, maybe for you to be the influence that's needed, or for you still to receive a blessing that could be waiting for you in the midst of confusion. Did you not know God can hide blessings in confusion? Yeah. Anybody know that? Has anybody ever experienced being blessed in a place where it's really not an ideal situation? The Bible, in the Bible, they asked about Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? The answer is, yeah. I don't care how bad Nazareth is or bad a place is. The blessings of God are without reproach, and they're not influenced or impacted by the evil that's going on around. That's the first part. So as the person or the family who's being sent by God is the key, and that's connected with him, Wherever God sins, he prepares you for, and he has something for you there. So your responsibility once you get there is not to see whether the people are validating that for you necessarily. That's a blessing and a bonus if they do, but that's not the determining factor of whether or not you're God sent. Am I making sense on that? Yes. Yes. I want to make sure we get that. The main point I want you to get, the people don't determine, or the person don't determine necessarily that that was you being God sent. It can help. It can validate. It can be one of the tools he uses, but it's not the only determining factor. Okay? Any questions or comments on that part? I have a comment. Um, okay. There could be something lacking or missing from the church, and then God could be sending that individual to bring about that change because they Absolutely. have that talent. So like being Ote, he started the Yeah ministry. So we were lacking in that area in our church and it wasn't the, a diffused situation. Like you accepted it and then we got together and we created it. So by us lacking it, he could have got frustrated and be like, they don't got it, I'm not gonna go. But instead he came and he started it and I think that we're doing an amazing job. Absolutely, and I love that illustration. Everything that exists now didn't exist before and somebody had to start somewhere. We, we, we miss that a lot of times. We forget. We get so caught up in established things that we forget about how it that probably began. And no big church, no big ministry, no great opportunity and move of God started out that way. 
it first started out as an idea God gave and then people willing to commit to the work that's needed to bring it to fruition. Y'all with me on that? That's yeah. a good point, Trina. All right. Any other questions or comments on that aspect, the, the, the family person dynamic? All right, so what's the issue with the church member dynamic? How is that a, a, a potential problem? What's the what's the flaw with them? Uh oh, that's a bad sign if we don't know that. Um, right. Sometimes I don't know. I, maybe they didn't. It, I don't know. It, I mean, the the paragraph is not giving enough information to. Well, let's assume in this instant that they have a valid reason to be frustrated with the church's philosophy or maybe an individual, but let's, let's especially then key in on the church's philosophy. They didn't receive them well or didn't wasn't nurturing enough and, uh, in helping them to become like family. The love that was shown, that could have been a reason. Okay. I don't know if there are any reasons that. Yeah. It could. All right. I see Marissa's comment. I think somebody else was trying to chime in. She said the individual, talking about the church member individual or whomever, is overshadowing the light of Christ. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good, good way to describe it. Was somebody else trying to chime in? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I was just going to say, um, I was going to echo what mom was saying. So it's like you're walking <laughs> as a, um, a new person into a, a home and if the people who live there don't make you feel welcome, that could hinder their uh, comfortability and their ability to grow if it's like we're standoffish. It's yeah. as though we kind of push them away without knowing it. We, we, don't, we don't intentionally do it, but it becomes that way um, when we don't when we don't so when we don't um, communicate with them and you know welcome them invite them and continue to talk don't just do it one time but continue to get them acclimated to the church absolutely and sister Lucas said the exact same thing she said sometimes they don't feel welcome and and I'm gonna talk about that in a second uh, Renata said the individual upholding the standards but not following them that's that's the other aspect and uh, and she's talking Marissa uh, Asia's talking about what Marissa said. Uh, maybe the church wasn't being led by God 100% more by man. All right, let's talk about all of these. First of all, let's talk about the um, the welcoming aspect. It's very important to create an environment as believers and as representatives of Christ, an environment that's welcoming for people to come in. At the point where we become, we determine whether or not a person belongs or if they should be here or shouldn't be here, then we have taken the purity of God's love and welcoming spirit and we've gotten in the way, as Marissa said. We are now put ourselves in the way of allowing that spirit of God to resonate with the person. Does that make sense? We should create an environment yeah. all the time that's welcoming for the Holy Spirit of God and for any person to connect with that Holy Spirit. They ain't there to see us. <laughs> they ain't there to see you. They're not there to hear you sing necessarily. They're not there to sit in your seat necessarily. They're there to experience God, and we are to be vessels that are used by God for them to have that experience. Am I making sense, y'all? This is important yeah. for a church to be the right environment in a loving church. We're not perfect people, but we can allow ourselves to be out of the way enough for God's perfection to be felt. And one of the greatest blessings, we're not, we're not perfect by no means, and we got a long ways to go, but I am blessed that there have been many times just in the last few years where people have told me or I've heard them say that when they came to Blackburn Chapel, they felt welcomed. They felt connected. And that's a blessing. Yeah, we can improve on that a little bit more, and I hope that we will as we go forward. But I feel like we're at least trying to do what's needed for a person to feel welcomed and feel connected when they come to Christ. And that's what we ought to be able to to, to make sure we put a priority on. But I just say, please don't sit in my seat. I know y'all got your favorite seats. We all got favorite seats. <laughs> it's okay. But if they happen to sit in your seat, don't pull a wig off the first day. Come on, y'all. Don't slap them. Don't, get, don't treat them some kind of way. Just sit somewhere else, and after service, go go bond with them over there. Say, you must really be resonating with me. That's where I normally sit, and y'all have a good time about it. <laughs> it's not about your seat. There's plenty of seats in the church. We got some good seats. So don't let that moment be ruined because we're so focused on what we think is comfortable for us, okay? All right. 
Uh, did I miss any comments on that? Uh, okay, so that's the first aspect, feeling welcome. The second thing that was stated is the individual upholding the standards but not following them. Hypocrite. Let's summarize it. They can yeah. sense and feel that you're being hypocrites. You shouted when they was talking about love your neighbor as yourself, but when you came in, you looked at them cross-eyed. <laughs> that's, hip <laughs> that's hypocritical, people, to, uh, to people that are seeking the genuine love of God. And you don't want to be in an, envir in an environment that's unauthentic. So you want to create an environment once again where the Holy Spirit is the dominant force, the dominant presence, and that all of us are submitted to that and being guided by that so that God's being edified. And then what Marissa said, the church wasn't being led by God. Same same thing. If you're being led by yourself, how you feel, then if you're having a bad day, you're going to make sure everybody got a bad day. But that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to move self out of the way. If we're having a bad day, come to the hospital to get medicine so that you can be better. And now we're in a place where we all can be blessed and experience the great things of God all at the same time. All right. Questions or comments? Living one way at the church, one way on social media. I can talk about that. My time about to get me. That's important, y'all. Man, yeah. I want to say something here. I want to stop being pastor for a second and just be Tremaine. To tell y'all, let's put it this way. Don't put things on social media you don't want people to know. Yes. Amen. That you wouldn't want God to know. Because everybody is not moving with a God spirit, even in the church. And even though some people have the spirit of God enough to see your faults and offenses and love you anyway, everybody ain't got that. I ain't got that. And you cannot then get offended and mad if people treat you a certain way if you put everything out there for them to see you a certain way. Amen. Can I can I at least get some slow amens? Amen. To that? Amen. Amen. And and you can block folks. You can think that they don't see it, but people see that stuff, y'all. They see what you're doing. So just be just let the spirit of God's wisdom be your guide, and know that that thing can be something that can cause you more harm than good. And then those of us that are truly God's representatives, no matter what we see on somebody's site or what they've done wrong, let's not hold it against them. Let's be glad all our stuff ain't on there. <laughs> because if all of our stuff was on there, we would be embarrassed. Asia said, I'd be embarrassed that I know them when that happened. Yeah, you, you would be embarrassed that you know them and that they're putting it out there. But then let's cover them. Let's try to counsel them properly. And, and in the mindset that we're glad all our stuff ain't on there. Because, you know, that is an embarrassing thing when you out there and you don't know you out there and you don't realize that you think it's cute, but people seeing that you really hurt or that you really wounded or that you really scarred. Uh, but let's cover each other's faults and offenses and, and pray for God to give us the wisdom on how to love everybody back into a place where we're covered by him. Because it's a cruel world. And if we expose them and cast them away and don't cover them, then now they out there without all those those heathens and, and people that don't care about them no way. <laughs> and now they're left to get their validation from those people. They're going to come up empty. They're going to come up empty. We got to love them back. All right. Um, any other questions or comments on that? Yes, it's a life. But some people do do it. For, some people get on social media every single day to see what they can talk about to everybody else that day. It just is what it is. Not everybody in there is is it proud that you and your baby accomplished what y'all accomplished? No, they waiting for you and that same baby to be somewhere where you're talking about, you're going to be child. Did you see where they were? They, they mm -hmm. going to spread that more than the good news about what you celebrated. I guarantee yeah. you. The bad stuff will, will go faster than anything accomplished that you put on there. So just be careful. Just be careful is all I can tell you. All right. Let me put a pin in it. Um... And we'll talk about Jesus' response to this challenge next week. Well, um, next week I'll be in the General Assembly, so uh, we need to pause for a week or two. Um, and then the next week will be the Presbytery. So I hadn't talked to said we, had, we, we won't meet until Friday. Uh, elders that are on here, are y'all good with us suspending class for maybe two weeks till we can uh, get on the other side of 
Presbyterian General Assembly. Council, yeah, so this is Elder Hall. I consent. Okay. Consent. Elder Jones. Oh, or Elder Snodgrass. Elder Cable, I got you. So um, let's plan to resume. I'm looking at my calendar. Wednesday, July the 27th. Wednesday, July 27th. And uh, we'll come back and we'll pick up here and we'll, we'll, we'll finish our classes then. So no class next week or the following week. Uh, General Assembly and the Huntsville Presbyterian will be going on those two weeks. All right, everybody good with that? Yeah. And Renato will be back yes, in town. Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Y'all behave yourselves next two weeks now. Don't, don't, don't go out and get, get drunk and get towed up. Me see you on social media. I'm going to call you out if I see you. I say, were you in Bible study that night? <laughs> All right. All right. Any final questions or comments or remarks or announcements before we get ready to close out? Pastor? Yes. Uh, I just, just would like to thank the church for the support that, uh, that I'm getting from the things that I'm going through with. I love each and every one of you. And I pray for blessing over you. Amen. Thank you, Elder Jones. I was not going to mention anything, but you came on the line one. Today Happy is birthday. his birthday. Today yes. is his birthday, y'all. Elder Lawrence Jones is his birthday. And yes, he has been a little under the weather and had some challenges, but God is making another testimony out of him. And we're thankful, thankful for him, his leadership, what he means to our church. And I'm glad to hear his voice. He's, he's, he's in the hospital recuperating, but he's still on this call. That's what I'm talking about. And was asking about session and all this. I told him, just, just relax. Just take care. We good. We good. But that's just who he is, and we thank God for him. We thank God for you, sir. And we hope you've enjoyed your birthday. All right. Any other announcements or remarks? I have an announcement. Yes. There is a, a wonderful uh, young man in my eyes. He's young in my eyes who will be celebrating his birthday tomorrow. And I just want to uh, invite the church to give him a call, give him a text, uh, let him know just how young he is on that day. Uh, his name is Pastor Tremaine Snodgrass. Well, wasn't that just sweet? Thank you. Aww. <laughs> Does that make me 40 years old? <laughs> Yes. I'm not, not going to say nothing on that, Mom. <laughs> I'm going to let that go. But, yes, thank you for that, and thank you all again. I'm starting to see the love there every year. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, that means it sounds like they're going to let me have my phone tomorrow, so hopefully I can respond to any chats or, or, or texts or emails. I think I just saw a couple. I, I think I saw some messages. I hadn't had a chance to read them yet. And Renata already calling me old. I got enough people. Marissa calls me old all the time. She's the only person that called me old. I'm not old to the rest of y'all. <laughs> That's why uh, I, I do... emphasize young man. <laughs> I do be on punishment ages. I get suspended. They treat me like you should have seen the way they've been doing me this week. But I know it's love. I know it's love, and I actually appreciate it. They, 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 they are God-given, and I'm thankful for that. All right. Thank you, ma'am. It... We will officially decide. We're, we're prayerful towards us still being in service Sunday. Uh, session will meet officially Friday and make the final determination. So if there's a reason to suspend, we'll get it out as soon as that meeting takes place. But we're prayerfully trending towards us being able to be back together this weekend. That's, that's the plan right now. But we've had to kind of slow it down, take it a day-by-day -day approach. And that's when we've determined, you know, with it being, you know, my birthday tomorrow, we determined to do it Friday. So, uh, okay. So y'all be on the lookout for that. Plan for it if you don't hear an announcement, but we're going to try to announce either way what we're actually going to do once we meet. Okay. Thank you for asking that. Anything else? All right. Age is nothing, just but a number. Thank you, Sister Lucas. Appreciate that. I'm going to tell them that. It's just a number. That's right. You're only as old as you feel, and you feel. I feel good. I'm thankful. I'm blessed, and uh, I'm truly, truly grateful for all the blessings that God continuously bestows. So you all are a big part of that. All right. If there is nothing else, um, any prayer requests or praise reports as we get ready to dismiss? 
prayer report, praise reports. We got one praise report from Elder Jones already. Any other other things we need to bring before before we petition the throne? All right. If, if, I got you, Renata. If not, let's pray. God, we thank you. Thank you for your many, many wonderful blessings that you continuously bestow upon us. God, when we're honest with ourselves, we don't truly deserve all of your goodness, but you just keep on blessing us anyway. And I'm just grateful and I'm overjoyed that when we take time to slow ourselves down enough to call out to you, to cry out to you, to seek you, you run swiftly to our needs, God, and you've demonstrated that over and over again. I thank you for the prayers of your people. I thank you for the faith, the determination, the commitment to persevere, to continue on in your name, and you continuously fill us up and give us new strength for the journey, and we thank you for that. Thank you for Elder Jones and what you're doing with him and that he's able to still be strength and com comfort to us and, and remind us of what happens when we place our faith fully in you. Thank you for all these other testimonies of people that have demonstrated through their life's experiences what true faith is and what it means to let you be our God in all seasons of our life. I personally thank you for this opportunity to have another birthday, to have another life celebration, God. I don't take it for granted that we're in a time where nothing is promised, but everything you give to us is blessed and it is to be received with a very grateful heart. Thank you for family, friends, for church members, all who make up this call. And Lord, I just want to put you in the proper context you deserve because when we petition you, we expect things to be done and we expect things to move because we do so by the power of your word. I lift up the young man that put in a request in the chat this evening, Lord God. You know what that situation is. You know what they stand in need of, God. And we are confident and we know right now that you are a healer. You are a sustainer. You've done it. You've done it just as recent as a few days ago, and you're doing it every single day. So touch, move, make whole as only you can. Give them peace and comfort to experience and to feel you close and to know that nothing is asked in vain when it's asked of our God. Thank you, Lord God, for the power to do any and everything, and thank you for the opening up your word to us and giving us hearts to receive. Bless and keep us these next couple of weeks. Give us wisdom to know how to guide the church in the direction you would have us to go. And thank you again for all that's been said and done here tonight. We thank you. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen together. Amen. 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 Right. amen. Thank you all. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Take care. Be blessed. Happy birthday. Happy thank birthday you. to you. Uh-oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>